Welcome to the AOA Strength Workout. Today, we're going to work on building some strength. What I want to start with is getting your legs strong. So we're going to start with the chair squat. And when you do the chair squat, I want you to pay attention to the details and the things I tell you to do. Make sure that you're able to do this exercise according to the limits and the expectations I put on this video. If you can't do the exercise as I've prescribed, that's totally okay. Do the best that you can at mimicking what I'm doing. If you need to, make sure you rewind the exercise so you can watch it over and over again and hear my explanations, especially if you're a little confused. If you're still confused further, be sure to send me an email. You can email me at carlos at lowbacks.com. That's carlos at l-o-w-b-a-c-k-s dot com. Here we go. The chair sit is pretty self-explanatory. All you do is squat down and try to sit on the chair. The trick and the way to make it a little more challenging is to try and pause, pause right before you sit. So in that pause position, you're going to get those quads to turn on in your lower body to really build some strength. So try to practice pausing right before you sit down and you'll build a lot more strength and you have a lot more control over when you sit down. So, two things to make sure of while you're doing this. Make sure that your feet are flat on the floor and make sure your chest stays lifted as you continue this exercise. Give it a try. That was the chair sit. Great job. I hope you got 10 reps, pausing on each one. Next, we're going to go into the chair climber. So just turn around and face your chair. Here we go. Make sure you start this exercise by keeping your shoulders directly over your wrists and your core tight. Start slow, elevating one knee towards the elbow, and then as you start to feel more comfortable with this, you can begin to pick up pace. But by going slow, you have learned to brace everything effectively. And then once you feel strong and stable, you can start to move quickly, which will help you burn more calories and create a more dynamic effect for your body. As soon as you get tired, go ahead back and relax and go back to a slow pace and then try to pick it back up as soon as you feel recovered. The trick is to go in between these two paces so that you start to build strength and stability in your core and shoulders, as well as start to build up some cardiovascular capacity by going faster. Give it a try. All right, that was the chair climber. I hope you got your heart rate up and did 20 reps total. Next, we're moving into a crawling pattern. This is called the bear crawl, all right? So start out by being on your hands and toes and trying to keep those knees as low as they can be. If you keep the knees low, it makes the exercise so much more challenging and more effective as well. But if it's too tough to keep the knees as low as I am here in the video, that's okay. Let those knees lift up and the hips lift up. What that'll do, though, is make it a little more intense on your shoulders. But that should be okay. So what I want you to try to do is get 10 steps forward and then 10 steps going backwards. If it's really hard to get those 10 steps all together, that's okay. Take a break whenever you need to. You can always drop those knees and rest for a second whenever you need. So try and get 10 steps forward and 10 steps backwards. If that's too easy, then go ahead and add a little bit more reps. Maybe do 20. But have fun and challenge your core with this awesome exercise. And that was the bear crawl, which is an awesome exercise. Next, we're moving into the Superman reach, okay? So we're going to start out on our stomachs. And we're going to start in a relaxed position. Then we're going to come up and contract everything. And that's the tough part. So what you do is lift the knees off the floor and squeeze the shoulder blades together. Once you've created that contraction, then you reach the arms up overhead, bring the elbows back in, and then relax. Make sure you relax in between each one. That gives you an opportunity to reset yourself and re-engage those muscles again. What I want you to focus on in your lower body is lifting the knees off the floor and squeezing your glutes really hard. Then go ahead and relax. And then on the next rep, lift your, do the same thing with your lower body, but focus on your upper body, squeezing your shoulder blades together and reaching those hands up overhead as high as you can. Give this one a try. All right, that was the Superman reach, and now we're moving into the side plank reach. Here we go. Beginning in side plank position, make sure that the elbow is directly under the shoulder and that the knee is in line with the elbow so your body makes a straight line. From here, reach that arm overhead and that top leg down and back to try to create a stretch in the abdominals and the lats. And then also, as you reach that leg back, don't let it touch the floor. Keep it hovering so that you get a good glute engagement as you're getting that stretch. 
When the knee and elbow come together, push them together to try to get a better core engagement so that you can light your abs up as you continue to move through this movement. It's an excellent way to engage your core and stretch your body out at the same time. Give it a try. All right, that was a side plank reach, and now let's get into the last core exercise, the hollow crunch. This is an excellent exercise to burn those abs. The hollow crunch is a great way to train your core. The focus is on smashing the lower back into the floor and reaching those hands straight up to the ceiling. By reaching straight up, you get the lower back to smash into the floor and you force the abs to engage in a more effective way. Remember, the goal of this exercise is for you to then be able to do the hollow body, which is another exercise that I show. This hollow crunch helps get a good burn in the abs and helps you feel like you're helping develop those muscles. And that's an important process, but the hollow body is the goal of this movement. So bringing this strength into the hollow body is what we're really looking for. Right, and we're pretty much finished with that first round. Now, we can be done with the workout if we want to be right now, but I challenge you to try to do the whole workout again, all right? Try to get through all the exercises at least one more time. That will give your brain and body a better ability to manage these movements, and that's the goal, to build strength and to improve our body's ability to manage itself physically, all right? So, one more thing I wanted to discuss. Let's talk about how many times you should do this in the week. Well, I think you should do it every day. If you did one round, just one round like we just finished right now, if you did one round every day this week, oh my God, your body would be so much stronger. But that might be too much. Maybe you don't have enough time or maybe you just don't have the energy. That's okay. Three times a week would be perfect. So if you could do one round three times a week, that'd be great. If you could do two rounds three times a week, that'd be better, all right? But make sure you're getting sleep and rest and make sure that you're eating some good food to go with this awesome workout. Remember, send me an email if you have any questions and thanks again for watching this awesome workout.